Hey there, I'm Alex. Today I want to talk about the importance of motion blur when going through Steam apps. I've I've supervised many many shows in in my time, and I've I've mentored also a few people. And what I a common thing that I notice is that when people go through Steam apps, uh, any transformations that they add, they just tick the motion blur option and they move on, but they don't realize that that doesn't really work that way. So I want to show you how to do it properly or at least the way I do it and give you a few options it's just something for you to keep in mind so let me go straight to it so what we have here is just you know a, a, a color wheel going through a transform right and if we look at that transform what I've done is I've enabled motion blur so I've, I've changed it from zero to one so that enables the motion blur and of course because we're not going through an ST map it behaves as we expect However, I've gone ahead and I've cloned that transform, right? So we have the exact same transformations going through the ST map. And if we now connect this instead, what you'll notice is that even though motion blur is turned on, the ST map isn't really translating, isn't passing that information over to the final result. So how do we solve this? And, and that's why I wanted to, um, to, to cover this today. So I'm going to show you a few options, right? So you see here, no motion blur. Again, if we check here, motion blur. So let me go through the couple scenarios that I have here. So first example I have is, let's say we're doing some sort of a water effect. So what I have here is uh, just a ripple distortion going through the ST map. And then I'm corner pinning that result to, um, to our checkerboard here, right? So you see we have the, the jiggle motion going, the ripples going through. And if we just do that, uh, merge it over our, our background, right? Just our black constant. You see, of course, there's no motion blur, right? See, it's pin sharp throughout. So I've gone ahead and I've I've exaggerated just to, for you to see that you know that, you know naturally everything wants a little bit of motion blur. So of course, this is a very extreme uh, a very extreme result, but just for you to see that what's happening there, right? So how am I achieving this? Because obviously, it's not coming out of the ST map. Um, what I, if you want to, I guess if you want to have uh, correct results or accurate results, vector generator usually works really well, right? So in this case, what I've done is I've attached vector uh, generator. So basically vanilla, I've, I've just upped the vector detail. I just tend to always move away from the 0.3 default. And then I am, I'm just shuffling those channels into red and green, and then I'm, I'm copying them uh, into a forward U and forward V, right? So that result, I am then running through a vector blur. You can use the vector blur two, which I think is what I'm using here, or you can use the vector blur, the old one, which I actually still like and use. And then you get the result that we expect, right? So we just change that frame and then you see it's it's calculating correctly. Of course, I've gone ahead and I've blasted this with more than I need just for you, for you to be able to see hopefully through the video compression. But um, of course, 10 is a very extreme number. You probably want to lower it down, but just for us to see what's going on. So that that would be the way of a, of a just a quick way of setting it up. I have a few other options to show you, but that's more or less something for you to keep in mind. Like, remember, anytime you go through an ST map, it's not going to transfer over the motion blur information. So definitely go ahead and do something like this so that your your uh, assets look correct in motion. OK, and, and that way they merge better with the background and it's just how it optically should be. Alex from the future here. I want to make a small clarification because moving forward, I'm going to be showing you the same uh, set of nodes to bring in the vector generator information. However, the reason why I did it this way in the in the video is because I wanted to be very explicit about what's happening. Like you're feeding it, it's generating vectors for you, and then you're shuffling them back into your pipe. However, the reality is that if you just copy over your vector generator here, that is already happening in the background within the node. So if you look at uh, layer context here, right? What you're going to find is that we already have that information uh, already built into the pipe. So if I, if we look at the result here for our vector generator, gone through the way I had done it here, and then connect our other vector generator. Let me just refresh that. What you'll find is that the result is exactly the same because, of course, it's just the same vectors. So you don't really need this. You can ditch it. And in the next example, I'm going to do it the same way, but just know that you can just connect the vector generator. 
So moving on to the next example, what I have here is I have a runner, and I've I've run I've run it through some um, smart vectors, right? And I've just blurred them so that they they don't chatter or anything. And then I've I've gone ahead and I've if we go to the first frame here, I just added a label to her vest, right? So we go from from this to this. And then of course if we setting setting the vector distort to ST map so that we get an ST map as an output and then if we just drive that right if we, if I were to if I were to play this back and if I just uh, if I just over the ST map result over our plate if I play this back what you'll see is what you expect like the text is sticking but it isn't necessarily motion blurring or not necessarily it's not motion blurring at all right so if we just let's let's pick a frame where she's like clearly moving downwards right if we look at that text that is pin sharp right so I it just have a bit of blur just for it to sit nicer in in the comp but if I go ahead and disable that blur right now you'll see is that there is absolutely no motion blur whatsoever, no matter what frame we stop at. Uh, so it's kind of the same problem that I was talking about before. So how do we solve that, right? So we have the vector generator option that I talked to you about. And here I have, I have it uh, working with um, a couple of vector blurs. So if we switch the result from zero, which is no, uh, no treatment whatsoever, just straight STMAP output into our comp. If I switch it to the vector blur one, what you'll see is that this is blur, this is mo has motion blur, right? So I'm going to go ahead and disable the blur on the text just so it's easier for us to see that motion blur. And of course, I've kept it very light because that's a slow mo shot, so it has very little motion blur. But if I were to increase that, you see that now. If we compare the ST map result with our vector blur result, you see we are we have full control of our uh, motion blur, right? So same thing. So you can, like I was saying, you can still use the old vector blur. So this is vector blur def default, the old one, or you can use the newer uh, class uh, vector blur, which is the vector blur two. Okay, so they they produce slightly different results, but the the feel is more or less the same. So it, it kind of depends on what. Uh, what you're comfortable with. Then there's a couple of other options, which I actually might not be the most uh, accurate at times, but it, I guess I've been doing it for so long and it just feels right to me and I, I know how to dial it in at this point. So this is a bit of a trick. If you if you grab a Kronos, right? So let me just grab a vanilla Kronos <clears throat> and you connect that to your output, which is our text, right? Here's a little trick for you. If you set the, uh, if you just leave it at output speed instead of frame, which is what we usually do, and set the output speed to something you know very close to one, like 0.99999. So if we compare that to that, it's virtually the same. You could even add another nine if you if you feel that if you like it. But you know it's basically the same image, right? So it's off by very little. And then what you want to do next is you want to give it some uh, shutter samples. So let's say 10 and then shutter time. You, could, you can have full control again here. And you see what we produce. If I go back to one, you see why we add those samples. So as I add more, it just gets smoother. So let's say I added 10. So now we have something that if I play this back now, uh, the Kronos is, is I guess it's, it's, it is calculating vectors in the background, so obviously it's going to be correct. Uh, I know, you know many people tend to use the vector generator. There's also expressions to calculate those vectors, but to me, Kronos has been very good. <laughs> like I, I, I use this solution very much. So if we, if we look at our solution right now and switch to the Kronos, which is our number three, if I play this back now, what you'll see is Maybe I'm a bit, I'm, I'm going a bit too heavy on the motion blur. It seems to be stretching too much. So, you know, you just go back in here and just say, let's say 0.2. Again, it's a slow-mo shot, so there's not going to be a, a crazy amount of motion blur. And you see, it does a pretty good job, right? So that's uh, the third option for you, I guess, after the two vector blurs with the foreground generator. And the nice one, the nice thing about this is that it requires less setup, right? So you just go from ST map straight into the chronos. You don't need to run vectors or shuffle in uh, or, or copy in um, the, the other channels to be able to run the vector blur. And you still have a fair amount of control. You can control the quality of that motion blur. So you can just, you know, add a GUI expression if you want to keep it light for your co live comping and then make sure that it just bumps up the samples when it hits the farm so you have the option of doing it and you have of course the shutter time control and of, of course because it is chronos you can still you know mess around with the vector detail and strength uh, so you have uh, a lot of control and that's why i tend to to do it this way right um so you also have the option 
of using a motion blur node. That to me is probably the one I use the least. I, it's not, it's accurate sometimes, so it's a bit of hit and miss, which is why I don't use it much. And again, if I play this back, it's gonna look fine. It looks fine. But sometimes, depending on what you feed it, it doesn't really work right. However, if I circle back to our old example, right? If I just grab that Chronos, which I've just praised on how well it works. If I just look at the output here from our ripple animation, and I just and I just take that Chronos here, and because I know this is uh, very light on motion, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the shutter time to something like one, may, maybe even higher than that. So if I could, if I connect, if I, if we look at that Kronos uh, output, I don't need to connect this here actually. If we look at that Kronos output, what, you, what you'll see is, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go heavy here just so that we can see that result. It's not doing a great job, right? So you see, there's a lot of ghosting, but not necessarily proper motion blurring. So while it may seem like a good idea for some shots it's not necessarily a blanket solution for everything. This is by far a better approach for something like this. So I guess it's just a good idea for you to be aware of the options that you have, and that's why I have them here. And you know, try them. Like I said, I usually go with these three. This one I rarely use, but it is an option. Like it works sometimes, like on the, on the example I gave you here. Um, and, and yeah, that's something that you definitely wanna do. Do not forget to motion blur your outputs from ST maps. And that's gonna do it for today. Cheers.